There has been a recent trend on TikTok where black users have been sharing stories about applying for jobs and only getting replies back after posing as white applicants. So let's go through some of these TikTokers. This first one up, Regina De Shabert, sounds like it. Well, she said that she repeatedly applied for a flight attendant job with the airline for five years. I think this is a Delta airline. And well, they kept denying her. She said that when she applied as a white woman, however, she finally got an email asking for an interview. Wow, interesting how that happens. And then TikTok user Journey claims that she applied for a job and got denied later when she applied again and put her race as Caucasian. And she got a call the very next day. Several viewers said that they also pretended to be white when applying for jobs, which is quite interesting. As that's something that a lot of us have experienced in terms of racism when it comes to applications in the workplace, which is interesting because you know people are out here saying, oh, affirmative action, people of color are taking jobs. Yeah, right. It's like we have to pretend to be white to get the job. <sighs> Anyways, let's talk about what we know. So we have this here saying, I've been a white man for two years, one viewer wrote. I have a I have a white name, so I just put white on all my applications and just know it causes problems when I walk in, another viewer said. One user wrote, I changed my first name from Yanisha to Amber on my resume and heard back from all the companies I previously applied to. Another TikToker said, I applied to nine jobs. The only job application I didn't specify, I got the interview and got the job. I didn't know whether to be happy or angry. Yeah, racial discrimination in hiring is still a very, very persistent issue in the United States. 2021 New York Times article, Detail the study where fake job applications were sent to a variety of firms. Each application was given a fake name with some bearing white sounding name like Jake or Molly and others claiming a black sounding name like Deshaun or Amani. The results, well, they were clear. This is what the article says happened. On average, applications from candidates with a black name get fewer callbacks than similar applications bearing a white name. When one of the researchers was later interviewed about the study from Marketplace Morning Report, they claimed that having a black sounding name resulted in an average callback penalty of about 10%. Though they admitted some companies fared much worse. Yeah. A lot of companies fare much worse. When I went to John Jay College in New York, we had also done a study. And we had found through our research that you were far off more likely to get a job if you were a white person with a criminal record, like a felony criminal record, as opposed to a black person with no record at all. And this was all determined just based on application. So being black and having a black name was the tell. But if you were John Smith as a white person and you had a felony record, you're more likely to get the call back than just the black person with no record. And so this really speaks volumes because it also impacts how we live our daily lives and the opportunities that are afforded to us as people of color. My name, Adrian Lawrence, is a very, I'd say, basic name in terms of the fact that I would assume to some extent it is colorless. But at the same time, my parents were well aware of that fact when they named me. And they did so in part with that in mind, knowing that life could be harder for me if they gave me a name that was less common or maybe more specific to the black community. And that sucks in part because as many of us African Americans know, we were stolen from a, an entire continent and brought here and given names, the names that our oppressors mandated that we have. And so a lot of black people will name their child as they see fit because they are getting away from those confines of slavery and getting away from those names. And still when we move away from that and own our own identities, we suffer by not being able to economically support ourselves because we are denied opportunities in the workplace. Ben. Yeah, I mean, this goes really, I think, to the heart of the reality that ultimately we can't make the real changes that need to be made until we're willing to address the economic inequalities at their heart, right? When we're talking about actual ownership, because the ultimate reality is, is that so long as the people who are like the executives and the hiring managers and things like that are predominantly white and very racist, right? Um, that's gonna be like this long standing problem. And while it's good to play, put in place like some of the laws that we have 
that theoretically are there to stop discrimination in the workplace and discrimination in hiring. Ultimately, those cases are incredibly difficult to prove based off of the standards that courts demand. And then additionally, it's just hard to get a lawyer. You need to be able to afford a lawyer in a lot of instances, or you need to have such a good case that the lawyer is willing to take it up pro bono on the assumption that you might actually win something out of it. And that just isn't the case all the time. And so, so long as there is this existing underlying economic inequality where white folks literally just had like 200 extra years ahead of time to like own things, give their kids jobs, make sure that their kids own things and create this intergenerational wealth. Now you have the situation where there's this filter, right? There's a sociological filter where black folks are literally just prevented from even gaining access, not even to just wealth, but just to basic income, right? Just to survive in terms of getting in a job. So like the people that try to separate social policy from economic policy are really making a big mistake. And they're really forgetting the reality that society can't change until the people with power change. Yeah, and the thing is, the people with power won't change. Uh, and I would say unless they're called out, because you know this whole we need to pass laws that ain't doing nothing. They pass some laws because they know it's a rubber stamp to be able to say, well, we did something. But they also know that there's so many hurdles and impediment throughout the system, as you noted, in terms of getting a lawyer and being able to have a case. That it's like, yeah, right. You rigged the system at every step to benefit white male supremacy, cis hetero white male supremacy, and so to pass laws in a system that. Is already worked for you and still works for you, they don't do nothing for us. What they need is accountability. So many of these companies are out in these streets claiming to be you know, pro diversity, claiming to be inclusive spaces. No, 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 no. You need to show your numbers, show your stats, show us what it looks like. So you have to own that. And you have to own it publicly. That is what a lot of these entities don't want to be seen. And also you have to change who are in positions of hiring. And doing that means you change who's in positions of power. But that change needs to be had, but it's not gonna be had unless people are called out and they are shown to be who they are. And then they have to be held publicly accountable for it. But as long as these companies get to hide behind hiding their data, their intel, who they're paying what, who they're bringing in, how they're treating people of color, what their retention rates are. They're gonna keep doing what they're doing. And as a result, we're gonna keep seeing the divides and the inequities that we keep seeing.